But the White House today made it clear it's moving ahead with gun control with or without Congress. Vice President Joe Biden, who's the torchbearer for the administration on the gun issue, said today the president could use the stroke of a pen, an executive order to push through strict new gun control measures. Lawmakers and the Constitution be damned. Joining me now, Doug Holtzik and the president of American Action Forum, Gretchen Hamill, the executive director of Public Notice, and Tyler Harbor, a Republican strategist. Doug, I'll turn to you first. What do you make of the president using an executive order on this topic of all things? Well, if, if I told you the topic was entitlement reform, would you be shocked that he wasn't pushing legislation in Congress? Or, <laughs> if, I mean, if the issue is immigration, immigration, union rights, uh, education reform, uh, using executive authority to bypass the Congress, uh, this, this is far from news. Far from news. Gretchen, uh, what do you make of it? You know, it's a very heated issue and one that needs to have the different voices and views heard on this. And I, I just think that this is not productive and would only fan the flames of an already hot, hot issue. Tyler, what do you say? So this is like giving a Mickey Mouse band-aid to someone with a compound fracture. You know, this doesn't, this doesn't get at the root of the problem. This is about trying to restrict uh, the ability to own and buy guns for people who are law-abiding citizens. This is not addressing safety or violent crime. Well, you know, I, I guess we could run the whole nation on executive order, uh, as Doug was suggesting, <laughs> but it's nothing I'm in favor of, that's for darn sure. Let's move on to our debt uh, and our nation's crisis with the debt ceiling. We default on February 15th. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, Doug, do you think we're going to avoid this or do you think we're going to have big problems here? Well, I think the answer is pretty simple, Jerry. Um, we don't have a, a fight or a crisis over the debt ceiling. We have a, a fight and a crisis over spending that causes debt. And if the spending were cut and there was an agreement put in place on the way to rein in explosive entitlement spending and brought the debt under control in the years to come, no one would even mention the debt ceiling. So I think the key will be to focus on the real problem, which is the debt, the acknowledged solution for anyone who's not living in a budgetary fantasy land, which is some sort of entitlement reform, and make some progress on that. I think it's budget fantasy land for us. Look, the Senate hasn't <laughs> passed a budget in 1,351 days, Gretchen. Come on. We're going to go, I mean, we are going to default on that debt. Our debt is going to get downgraded by Standard & Poor's and Moody's and everybody else. And again, we're going to have a sell-off of 2,000 points in the stock market. Am I right? Right. You're right. And on top of that, having a budget, we've also had five trillion dollars worth of five trillion year or five years worth of trillion dollar deficits. That's what we're heading towards. We've had the four past years, and CBO just came in, coming out saying that we are headed to our fifth year. It's unbelievable. Tyler, to you, you know, there was a poll out that shows that Americans have a higher opinion of cockroaches than they do Congress. <laughs> I mean, well, think about you know, it. It's, it's, not, it's not hard to see why. You know, you've got a Congress and an administration that, that is uh, uh, solutions challenged. You know, they, they're not interested in the solutions. They're interested in the game. And that's all that the American public is seeing. And unfortunately, uh, the people who really pay for it are the taxpayers and the, the people who uh, go to work every day. And those people are going to pay for, for this continuous game of pushing like it down. those people, like there's some, like, clubhouse somewhere where the three or four <laughs> people who are taxpayers, look, it's me and you and everybody on this panel. We're, we're picking up I the know. tab. I know. And, and, and Congress, you know, the people in this city, in D.C., they don't understand that. It, it, they're cut off from the world. Cut off you from know, the Jerry, world. Yeah, go Jerry, ahead. I mean, you know, you always see these polls that say that, you know, only 7% of Americans like Congress. And people always ask, what's wrong with Congress? I want to know what's wrong with those 7% of Americans. I mean, that's a real concern. <laughs> They've lost their minds, Doug. They're not reading the paper. And former clearly. office holders. <laughs> <laughs> Family members. Oh, and now we have the pictures of the cockroaches. Very nice. Let me tell you, if you're a New Yorker, you've seen that before. That's a movie you don't want to see again. Gretchen, I want to turn to you for a minute because one of the big things we've been debating is the number of women mm -hmm. that work for the president. And there was a picture that came out, and it looks like it's all fellas working for the president. Yeah. Of course, that's not technically true. But do you think the president has a woman problem? You know, it seems like he does. I mean, this is another area where the rhetoric doesn't match the reality, just as it has, you know, spending agenda. Um, 
But when it comes down to it, women have complained about the access that they've had to the president in, in this administration. They've also yeah. complained about it being a hostile workplace and a hostile work environment. And I think the president who campaigned at being the candidate for women now has an issue with women. It was all talk, and now we're not seeing him actually deliver on it. Well, we're looking at all these new people that are being put up for new jobs, and they're all fellas, Jack Lou. They're all and fellas. you know what's more, Doug yeah. Holtzikin? They're all politicians. You know, you may have yeah. disagreed with Tim Geithner, but at least he ran the New York Fed. He knew the players. He knew all the Wall Street bankers. He knew the issues. He knew how the companies worked. Jack Lou, what, what is he going to tell us? I mean, I just, well, I, mean, I think it's weird for him to be in charge of the Treasury. Well, I mean, look, he has a great head of hair, which where I'm coming from, <laughs> it counts lots. Um, uh, obviously, he has the confidence of the president, uh, but the portfolio of the Secretary of the Treasury is both enormous and crucial, both domestically and internationally. Absolutely. And um, w one would hope that uh, we're going to get the leadership we need on the things we've talked about, you know, just in this segment on entitlement reform, on the GSEs, mm -hmm. on, on the, the growth pattern in this economy, which is just absolutely appalling. And now we've got the Labor Department, uh, that uh, leadership, and that is also opening up. It'll be interesting to see if that woman is replaced by a fella. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Guys, thanks for coming on tonight. Great job. Entertaining job. Thanks. Doug, Gretchen, and Tyler, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Gary. Okay, now the latest.